Welcome into a brand new episode of the RSL Show on the KSL Sports Network. I'm intern Alex. I'm coming at you with a little bit of a solo show. Just a quick recap to catch you up on all the latest RSL news that we missed since the last time uh, we were able to record. And we'll start off with the three games that have happened for RSL since the last time we spoke. And it's been all road away games. Two in Colorado, one in Minnesota. Um, Real quick, just to recap, Colorado... The first game in Colorado was on um, Saturday the 20th. It was a 3-2 win in the league for RSL thanks to goals from Pablo Ruiz, Danny Musaski, and Demir Krylak. Uh, Wilson and Lala Sabubakar were able to score for Colorado. Um, but that game, it was a, it was overall a good performance from RSL, especially in a heavily rotated RSL squad. Um, it's good to see guys like Demir Krylak and Danny Musaski get on the score sheet. Pablo Ruiz, who got a little bit lucky with the deflection, but regardless, still a banger uh, from deep. And um, Arsenal was able to walk away with the three points from, from Dick Sporting Goods Park. Always a plus. And then at the midweek in the Open Cup, Arsenal was able to get a one nothing win over Colorado thanks to a Jefferson Savarino goal. That game was a lot more close, I would say. Um, it was a lot more... It was a little bit more back and forth, um, especially on the Colorado side. RSL maybe had like one or two like really good clear cut chances, um, and they were able to capitalize off of it thanks to the Jefferson Savarino. But not meant not much really to talk about in that one. Uh, Gavin Beavers made a couple of big saves defensively. The team has really stepped up over the course of the last couple of weeks, and they looked really good against Colorado um, in that Open Cup match. And at the end of the day, it's a one nothing win. It's survive in advance, and RSL did that. They were able to get the goal from Sava to get the one nothing win in Colorado on Wednesday, May 24th. And they now have a date with the LA Galaxy in the next round of the Open Cup in the quarterfinal match of the U.S. Open Cup. Um, that one is scheduled for Wednesday, June 7th against the Galaxy at America First Field at 7.30 p.m. So we hope to see you there. The guys will probably go into depth more regarding the Minnesota United matchup that we just had this past Saturday, May 27th. It was a 1-1 draw, and to be honest, it was an unlucky result. Um, I think, like I said, defensively, RSL has really stepped it up over the course of the last couple weeks. I think that's by far one of the best matches we've seen from Justin Glad, one of the best matches we've seen from Andrew Brody. Um, and it was so awesome to see Marcelo Silva come back and have the performance that he had in Minnesota because defensively this team was really solid. They were compact. They were really, really good. But then you can see the own goal off the unlucky bounce off of Justin Glad um, right after, I think it was like three, four minutes after Jefferson Savarino scores to put Arcel ahead on the road. Just unlucky. It's just a super unfortunate bounce. Um, you know, I think... Obviously, without that unlucky bounce, obviously, I think Arcel walks out with three points. Defensively, throughout the match, they just did so well. Even with Gavin, um, even when Gavin had to come in um, due to the McMath injury at the break, um, they still showed really, really well defensively. I think Gavin had a couple of big saves in that second half, too. And without that unlucky bounce, it easily could have been three points for RSL. But then you also have to look at the attacking side. I think there was a lot of opportunities that RSL just couldn't capitalize due to what we've talked about before, whether it's lack of creativity, whether it's lack of that finishing touch in the final third, whether it's the lack of a true number nine. Arsenal had their opportunities to go two in front, to go, you know, score more. Um, there was a couple opportunities in the first half. One off the top of my head was Rubio Rubin, who missed a little bit of a sitter um, in front of Dane Sinclair and Minnesota's box. But in the second half, there was a couple one that I think there was like one from Bertin Jackson as well um so i think it, it, it at the end of the day it's a positive um we will take a point in minnesota any day when typically we're just not that great on the road at minnesota but at the same time the opportunities were there and the chances were there for ourselves to try to take the lead and try to take three points but really really solid performance defensively just super unlucky off the equalizer from minnesota At this point of the season, RSL finds himself in the 11th place of the Western Conference. Uh, 14 matches played, 4 win, uh, 4 draws, 6 losses. And interestingly enough, this is a team who's historically just not been good on the road. 
they haven't really been able to get points or, or really good wins on the road. Um, but I think under Pablo Mastroeni, that's kind of changed. We saw that last year with a big win in Montreal. Uh, we saw that with a big win in, in New England. And we're kind of seeing that again this year. Um, as things stand right now with RSL, they're kind of even with home points and on the road. Um, at this point of the season, we currently have two wins, two draws, and three losses at home. So that sits us at eight points overall taken from the, I want to say, seven home matches that RSL has played, which is not good. But then you look at the flip side and you look at the road performances and you got two wins, two draws, and three losses on the road for eight points, which is a positive, in my opinion, for RSL, who, again, just aren't historically great on the road. But this season has been kind of is has been kind of weird with that slow start that we had um, and then kind of picking things up as well. But with, with the schedule, the congested schedule that Arzal's had, they're putting results and they're getting results on the road, which, again, just historically is odd for, for an RSL side. Would we love to see better performances and more points at home? Absolutely. But at the same time, you know, glass half empty, glass half full type situation. I'll take the road performances that we've seen from RSL this season. Um, I think... On the road, RSL has been able to go out and kind of get could get good performances and get good results. And um, we'll take a point in Minnesota any day of the week, especially now. But at the same time, we got to start picking up three points at home. Um, sitting in eleventh place um, at sixteen points, tied with Austin and Portland, who are just above us on points. We're only below them due to the tiebreakers uh, in Major League Soccer, but. Regardless, it feels like Arsenal right now is just kind of dancing with that playoff line. We're not really doing enough to get over the line, um, but we're also not too far off the line, especially considering that we're tied with with Portland and Austin. We're only a point uh, and two off of Vancouver and Houston. Um, at this point of the season, though, we got to start picking up home results. We got to start picking up the points at home. I feel like up to this point of the season, we have just lost too many points at America first field. Um, We haven't really been able to be that dominant force, be that team that really, really, you know, you feel confident of that about a team that just goes out and gets three points at home. Um, And it felt like that for most part of the season last year, but this year our souls really struggled with that. And so we got to start picking up those points at home um, or else we're going to continue to just kind of teeter on that playoff line and maybe be on the outside looking in um, at, not the most ideal times of the season and a lot of criticisms um, were on that RSL defense and again I just want to reiterate that defensively this team has really stepped up over the course of the last couple weeks you know we got a we got a bunch of shutouts coming into this one Um, again just really solid defensively against Colorado in both matches I think we're really solid defensively in Minnesota and I think that was huge for for those games um, defensively stepping up I think the midfield is playing a lot better than they were at the start of the season you got guys like Yakison and Emeka Nelly um, and Gavin Beavers as well who are coming into the lineup coming into um, coming into rhythm to play MLS competition and they look good they look good on the ball they look good with the choices they're making and there's there's a lot of positives in, in the way that RSL is heading and now we got a big test again at home against the Galaxy uh, Wednesday night, and it'll be interesting just to kind of see what RSL is able to do. It's a game that you know you would expect RSL to win due to the fact that LA Galaxy's record is literally the worst in the league. They're currently sitting at the bottom um, with only nine points earned on the season, and they they're missing a game. Uh, they have a game in hand, but regardless, it's still a situation where. You expect RSL to come into this match and get the three points against a team who's struggling, against a team who's not really finding their form, not really playing good football um, over in the Galaxy, which is weird to say about the Galaxy, but it, it's true. And now we're at a position where, like I said, we need to start picking up those three points at home. We need to start getting better results um, and better performances at home in order to be competitive and in order to try to get above that playoff line. Other big 
talking points, other big news that we may have missed while um, while we're taking a little little hiatus, um, is that Diego Luna heading over to the to Argentina at the U twenty World Cup, and he's been a key contributor to that squad down there in Argentina fighting for that U twenty World Cup. Um, he's had some good performances for for the U.S. U twenty national team. Um, and he's been a, a vital player to that squad so far and the success that that team is finding um, at the World Cup so far. He played the full 90 um, in that first group stage match against Ecuador um, where he played a full he played a full 90 and he showed some good glimpses of, of what Diego Luna can be. Um, and then he played against the Fiji U20 national team. Um, he only played 45 minutes in that one, subbing in um, around halftime for that. Uh, but he got a goal and an assist against Fiji for the U.S. U-20 to win 3-0. Um, and then a 2-0 win against Slovakia in the third and final group stage match where he played about 73 minutes in that one. Um, and he's been he's been contributing to that team. In today's match against New Zealand in the round of 16, he was able to get two assists um, and create a lot of good chances for that U.S. U-20 team. Um, and so hats off to Diego Luna. Um, he's been. He went out to Argentina with a mission, and that mission was to ball out. That mission was to go out, get some good performances, and get some eyes on him. And so far, he's done just that. So big credit and a big shout out to Diego Luna for the performances that he's been able to put on at the U twenty level. And again, I guess now the big question is how can Diego Luna translate that not only to RSL but to the MLS level? And maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have the opportunity to see that once he returns to Real Salt Lake. Other news and talking points that we have uh, regarding over the course of the last couple weeks is Bobby Wood and Justin Miram uh, becoming key contributors for New England Revolution and Charlotte FC, respectively. This past week, and Justin Miram not only was able to get another assist for Charlotte, but he was also able to earn Team of the Week honors uh, in Major League Soccer. So a big... Shout out to Justin Miram and then Bobby Wood, who's scoring goals for New England and helping them continue on their quest um, to be one of the top teams in the league. Right now, New England sit near the top of the Supporter Shield battle. They sit near the top of the East. And so Bobby Wood helping New England not only contend for Supporter Shield, but is able to get some goals in for the Revs. So big shout out to two former RSL guys who are uh, doing well for their new clubs. Some other talking points around the league that I hope we can get to um, with the rest of the guys is the situations currently going on at Los Angeles Galaxy and Toronto FC. I want to start with Toronto first. Um, Sometime last week, I want to say Thursday or Friday, Tom Bogert of The Athletic released an article regarding the tension and the, um, I guess, the unrest in that Toronto locker room. Uh, The two... Stars, the two DPs in Bernadeschi and Insigne, not really getting along with each other. It's rumored that they're kind of jealous that one is getting more of the limelight than the other. Insigne not really caring about Major League Soccer um, due to the way, because of the way Toronto's performing. Uh, Insigne and Bernadeschi meeting with higher ups and the FO over at Toronto FC to possibly look to possibly convince them to fire. Uh, Bob Bradley as head coach because they don't necessarily like the system or or you know the way Bob Bradley is running things over in Toronto as well as his relationship with his kid Michael Bradley who's still playing in his captains uh, that Toronto FC team at times and so they met with the front office to say hey th- we're not really liking what's going on here at Toronto we don't really like the relationship Uh, between the coach and his kid Uh, we don't really like um, a lot of the situation of why Toronto is the way that it is and it's kind of crazy to think that the two the team right with the highest salary um, the team that's paying their players the most is the team that's struggling the most and it now you know I got your two stars on the team um, in in seeing Nana Benadeshi basically finding each other in the locker room and as well as going as far as to go up to the front office and say, hey, we don't want this coach. We don't want Bob Bradley to be um, in charge anymore. Um, there's been 
Uh, according to Bogart, those were all secret meetings held by Bernadette and Insigne. Uh, they're also struggling to, to get along because they don't want to share this the limelight, that starlight, I guess, over in Toronto. Um, it also came out that a star was suspended, but I think over the weekend we found out that it was Bernadette who was suspended because he wasn't available for Toronto this past weekend. Um, and one player even went as far to say that the situation's messed up. <laughs> it's not good uh, right now at Toronto. Um, so it was going to be interesting to kind of keep an eye on that and see what develops there. Um, and then with LA Galaxy, you know, a couple months ago, Chris Klein came out and said that, hey, if we don't make the playoffs, I will personally step down of my position. Over the weekend, they lose to Charlotte at home one nothing, And then... The LA Galaxy players, there's a video circulating all over social media of the Galaxy players going over to the supporter section after the game, and the supporters are just going in on the team, demanding better, wanting better. Greg Vaney, the head coach, has to come over and basically calm down the fans, but you can just see the sadness. You can just see the the faces of the players that they know that they're not doing good enough for the fans. They know that the situation in Galaxy is not good. And you can just see them trying to apologize to the fans. You can see them trying to give away jerseys, game-worn jerseys, to make the people, you know, feel better. But it's the results just aren't there for the Galaxy. And then, interestingly enough, a couple hours before I record this, uh, you know, Chris Klein, who came out and said that he would step down um, if the Galaxy didn't make the playoffs at the end of the season. Now, a few hours ago, Chris Klein is actually fired from his position at the LA Galaxy. Um, He's fired as the president of the club. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens, who they bring on to try to save LA. Um, Because right now, that's just a team that's not heading in the right direction. You got fans turning on the team. You got fans turning on players. Greg Vaney, after match, is trying to go over and apologize and calm the fans down. But just a bad situation. I think that's kind of, I think that video that's been circulating social media is kind of the last straw from you know, the owners and, and the upper uppers of the LA Galaxy to finally pull the plug and say, hey, maybe it's time for Chris Chris Klein to go. And so now they head into tomorrow's match against Real Salt Lake uh, without a president now that Chris Klein has been uh, let go at the LA Galaxy. We'll hopefully have a much more in-depth um, and a much more uh, discussion about the situations kind of happening at Toronto and, and LA with the rest of the guys uh, when we record again later this week. But um, like I said, it'll just be really interesting to see kind of what shapes up there and what happens with uh, with the Galaxy and with Toronto, who again are the two teams who have have the highest salary uh, bills in the league, and they're just not producing. So it'll, like I said, it'll just be interesting, and I hope we can have the conversation uh, with the rest of the team. Um, that's pretty much the major news, though. That's kind of like the main big bullet points um, for what's kind of been going on for Russell Lake for within the league. There's not been a lot of RSL news, obviously, besides the games uh, and Diego Luna going to the U20 World Cup. There was a report from Tom Boger as well. Um, I think no. It first came from a Croatian outlet saying that RSL made like a three point eight million bid for a striker, and then Tom Bogar comes out the next day and says that it's false. It's actually Cincinnati who ma- who's making the bid, um, and so the question there again remains: Where does the striker come from? Are is are RSL actively looking for that striker? Um, so it'll be inter- it's going to be interesting to see as we get closer to the opening of the summer window here for Major League Soccer. But as well because European leagues have just ended this past weekend. I think Serie A and a couple others are still yet to end uh, this upcoming weekend. But Europe is pretty much over uh, by the end of next week. And so it'll be interesting to see what kind of players RSL looks at from the European market, if any. And to see if RSL decide to make a splash on a true number 9 this upcoming summer window. Um, Tom Bogart... Uh, I'm upset at you for making me believe that we were going to go out for a striker and then taking away taking it away from us within a couple hours of that report. Just to wrap up, we got a couple of quick predictions coming in from the rest of the team. 
regarding the Los Angeles Galaxy match on Wednesday, uh, May 31st. I think RSL is able to get a win. I'm going to go 2 1 against the Galaxy here at home. Joshua Clark thinks that we'll draw 2 2 against the Los Angeles Galaxy here at America First. And junior producer Isaac Munoz believes that RSL will get a 3 1 win here at America First. And lastly, our host Andy Munoz believes that RSL pulls off a 2 0 win against the Los Angeles Galaxy here at home. Also, just keep in mind that Chicharito will not be available for this match as he was suspended in the last match. So LA Galaxy come to America first without Chicharito. Thanks for tuning in to a quick recap uh, of our Real Salt Lake over the course of the last few weeks. We hope to come back and bring you more podcasts soon, more video content soon. Um, We've just had crazy schedules that haven't really been lining up for the team. Um, But that should hopefully soon be worked out and we will make sure to bring you more RSL content um, here over the summer. That's going to do it, though, for this episode of the RSL show. Make sure to go like, subscribe, um, follow us on Twitter, on IG, uh, the whole shebang. Make sure to go check us out on the KSL Sports Network. I'm Alex Napolis, the intern, and we'll see you guys later this week um, with the rest of the team, with Joshua Clark, with Isaac Munoz and with Andy Munoz of the RSL Show. Thank you for listening to the RSL Show on the KSL Sports Network. Keep it here for the best RSL content.